The title of this story is The Punishment, and it's from my first CD, Jesse and Other Stories. When I was growing up, the rule of thumb was that children should be seen and not heard. And while that philosophy had its advantages, it also had a tendency to build a wall between parent and child. I was very lucky. Somebody tore that wall down for me while I was just a little girl. And he did it in a most unusual way. In fact, they still talk about the punishment in my house. And now that both of my parents are gone, and the oath of secrecy to which I was sworn is no longer binding, I feel that I should step forward and tell the true story of the punishment at last. You see, my father did not believe in hitting children. Reason, he said, was a much better deterrent than force. Now, my mother felt differently about the matter. She said that a hard whack from an open hand on a bare bottom was the only thing that a small child could understand. And so my mother was the disciplinarian in our house. She would mete out punishment that was quick and painful, though not undeserved, while my father chose to ignore the things that we did wrong and shower us with praise whenever we did anything right. And as a result of these two diametrically opposed theories of child rearing, we children doted on my father, while we treated my mother with only a cold and somewhat guarded respect. And she was more than a little jealous of that. In fact, one day I heard her saying to my father, Ted, Ted, those young'uns love you more than they love me, and it's because you let them get away with murder. Now, Daddy objected to that. He said, that's not so, Pauline. Them young'uns don't love me more. Why, it's just that you're so stern all the time. They're afraid to show you any affection. Now, punishing a child that's done something wrong is all fine and good, but it wouldn't hurt you to show a little compassion once in a while. Now, that made my mama irate. Compassion? Well, I'll show them some compassion when they learn to behave. Now, Ted Wright, I've always said you're a wise man, but at times like this, I start to wonder. See, my mama resented the fact that she always had to be the bad guy. And one day, she decided to do something about it. What happened was this. I was in the third grade. And one morning, as I was getting ready to go to school, I asked my mama if I could go home with my friend Kathy after school. She said, no. I went anyway. And as I was walking home late that afternoon, I knew what was going to be waiting for me when I got there. My mother, standing on the front porch with one hand on her hip and a freshly picked switch in the other. But that was okay. I had had such a good time at, at Kathy's that I didn't mind getting switched for it. And besides, my mama was just a little woman, five feet two inches tall, weighed all of 85 pounds. She did not pack much of a wallet. But when I got home, what I expected was not what I found. My mother was not on the front porch with a switch. She was inside, arms folded across her chest, shaking with anger. And as I walked through the front door, she turned to my daddy and she said, Ted, Ted, I want you to take that young'un into that back room. I want you to whoop her good, because I'm so mad. If I do it, I'm like to kill her. And to my surprise, my daddy said, all right, Pauline. And then he took me by the hand. And he took me into that back bedroom. Now, I don't mind tell you, telling you, my knees were knocking like they were made out of jello. My throat was so dry I could hardly speak. My daddy looked at me and he said, Now, Linda, you know that what you did today was wrong, don't you? I just nodded because I was too scared to speak. Well, I told you, Ma, I was going to take care of this. Reckon that's what I'll have to do. If I was scared before, I was terrified now. Because remember, my mama was just a little woman. She didn't pack much of a wallop. But my daddy was six feet, five inches tall, weighed 230 pounds, and I knew that just one blow from his huge right hand would knock me clear into tomorrow. But even worse than that, even worse than that, was the knowledge and the humiliation 
in knowing that I would be the only child that he had ever had to hit. He rolled up his sleeves. Now, Linda, this year's what I aim to do. I'm going to bang my hands together just as loud and just as hard as I can. And while I'm doing that, you're to carry on like it's you I'm a whopping. And you better be good about it, you hear? Because your ma is not an easy person to fool. Well, this put a whole new light on things. This could even be fun. And so my daddy started banging his hands together just as loud and just as hard as he could. I screamed and hollered and carried on. I even cried real tears. I decided right then and there that I was going to be an actress one day. Then Daddy stopped and he went like this. That was the secret sign between the two of us that what happened in that room that day would not pass either of our lips unless one of us was dead. Daddy opened the door, walked outside, head down, shaking. I followed behind my face, streaked with crocodile tears, when all of a sudden, my mother ran up to me, threw her arms around me, and cried, my baby! And then she looked at my daddy, and she said, you didn't have to hit her that hard. She didn't speak to him for three days after that. Now, after that day, my father would volunteer to administer punishment when it was necessary. But my mother wouldn't let him. He didn't know his own strength, she said. And so things went back to the way they had always been, with my mother meeting out punishment and my father doling out praise. The only thing that changed was me. Because, you see, after that day, I started feeling differently about my mother. And I actually started thinking before I said things that might hurt her feelings. And I stopped purposely doing things that I knew would make her mad. In fact, when I look back on it now, I can see that my mother and I became quite close as a result of the punishment. Now, as I said at the beginning of this story, both of my parents are gone now. And I'm sure my father wouldn't mind my sharing this story with you this afternoon. In fact, I bet he's up in heaven right now looking down here getting a good chuckle out of hearing me share it again. And my mama, well, I bet she's right there beside him smiling. And right about now, I bet she's turning to him and she's saying, well, Ted, I reckon you were right after all. It doesn't hurt to show a little compassion once in a while.